Hi, I'm Charlie Weiss. Today we're going to talk about a tough subject for all of us, and that subject is end of life care. And a question that clients ask me a lot is how do I know that it's time? How do I know? when it's time to let my beloved pet kick go, when it's the right time when they're suffering. And I'll try to answer that question for you and I'll try to help guide you and give you guidelines so as you have to make this terrible decision, you'll have some guidelines to go on that I think will be helpful. First of all, I'd like to say that it takes a great deal of courage to do what you're doing and I have great respect for you that you're taking the time to watch this video so you can make the best decision for your pet. So I have a great deal of respect for you so thank you for taking the time to watch this and thank you for caring so much about your pet. And the one thing that I'd like to say right off the bat is the people that seem to have the hardest time with this topic and the hardest time making this decision, the one thing I know about people like that is because they love their pet so much, their pet actually had probably a great life. Someone who would care so much to take the time to watch this video someone who would care so much and be so upset by this process which is totally normal to be upset but to be so upset it tells me how much you care and it tells me the day-to-day -day life of your pet was really good because you cared so much so again thank you for giving your pet such a good life and taking the time and commitment and giving it all the love that you could give it now there are a couple of things to know. There are a couple of principles to know. One is that as pets get older and when, they, when their body starts to fail, their body or mind, it's more common for their body to fail before their mind, but it could be either. But when their body starts to fail and as they start to go downhill and as their body is declining like this, going down, it's usually not a smooth ride like that. It's usually an up and down as they go down. So it's usually an up and down ride. And what that means is one day or for several hours, they may have a tough spell. They may have trouble getting up. They may have trouble moving around. And then it's possible half day later, sometimes the next day, they pick up, they're a little bit stronger, they rebound a little bit. And that cycle, again, can go on and on. That's a natural process as their body gets strained of energy, they're worn out, they have a lot of struggle and trouble for a little bit and their body rests several hours, sometimes overnight, and sometimes they can rebound to be a little bit stronger. So it is normal for them to go up and down as the overall picture is, is headed down, as their body is failing. So it's important that you know that so when you see a minute to minute change or even an hour to hour or day to day change, still they may rebound, they may feel a little bit better, so you don't have to make any immediate decision unless they're really suffering or in a great deal of pain. You may not have to jump when you see when you see a sudden change. If they can't get up one morning, you can help them, make it easier for them. But still, ride it out, give it, give it a little bit of the day, maybe a day or two, and see how they respond. So that's one thing that's really important that they do have ups and downs. And another thing to know is that some conditions are faster than others. Some of the conditions we see in pets as their bodies are failing can be very sudden. Other times it can be a little bit slower. 
but in the overall scheme of things, when it's slower and it takes a longer time, it's a double-edged sword. People have time to emotionally prepare over a long period of time, but sometimes the, su the pets suffer, sometimes the pets have trouble for a long period of time. When it's sudden, when it comes on sudden, you have to make a sudden decision. Emotionally, that's very hard for people. They're unprepared. Maybe they didn't know, they didn't expect it. So emotionally, that can be hard for us. But in the long run, looking back on it, sometimes it's a blessing for the pet that they didn't suffer and go through a lot, even though it's emotionally a shock for us when it happens. So there are different rates of speed. And, um, and another thing to know, when it, when it seems that it comes on suddenly, all of the organs that we have have what's called reserve capacity. So all of our organs have reserve capacity. What that means is, for example, our kidneys, and this is for all of our organs, our brain, our kidneys, our liver, our pancreas, there's a percentage of the kidneys that can not function. And if there's still a certain percentage of the kidneys working, the toxin levels don't build up too fast and the animal or person can function okay. So it's possible for one of their organs to slowly be failing and to see no symptoms until it suddenly hits a threshold level. And with the kidneys, it's about 66%. When 66% of the kidneys are damaged, that's when the toxins build up. That's when we start to see symptoms of the toxin levels building up because the kidneys filter the toxins out of our body. So the reserve capacity is up to 66% damage. You may see no symptoms. So they can have diseases that are going on without even noticing it. It can be very subtle. But then when they suddenly hit that threshold and hit that point, toxins can build up and it can seem to come on within days sometimes, sometimes within weeks. And it can seem to come up fast where many times it's been coming on and it may not have been noticed. And that's where it's beneficial to do preoperative tests on animals that need surgery or have their teeth cleaned or um, Annual checks when they hit a certain age is not a bad idea because sometimes they don't have symptoms. So that's that's another important point. The next thing is that it's it's important to realize that this is an individual decision. And the reason it's an individual decision, because this I see many different species. I see and treat dogs, cats, ferrets, rabbits, guinea pigs, and all of these species at some point their body will fail and at some point we may have to make this decision to let them go. And the reason it's an individual decision is every single person and every single household has a different philosophy on when the right time is on when their animal's suffering. Some people believe in their heart that their animal's not suffering until it gets close to the very end and until it can't function, can't get up. Some people don't mind if their animal is incontinent and they'll clean it up or they'll use diapers. There are other people that for their household Maybe there's a very busy household. Maybe they have a lot of steps and stairs. Maybe it's just not possible to lift a dog that's a big dog. And once the animal starts to lose some of its function, maybe it's just too much for that household. Or maybe people have gone through a terrible situation with another pet or sometimes with a human in the past where somebody has suffered and it's too, it's too much emotionally to feel that they're putting their animal through that. So it's really an individual decision. And it's important to know that 
because when you describe the symptoms to your friends, when you describe the symptoms to people on the internet, somebody in the store, they may have an impression and they may say, oh, I think it's time, or no, it's definitely not time. But it really, each family has to decide it on their own. It has to come from inside. And you'll know when your pet is struggling. You'll know when your pet is suffering too much and when it's time to let go. And I truly believe that each person will know. And as the body's starting to fail, there are multiple organs that can start to fail. One is their senses, which would be their eyes. Animals can get around blind okay. And emotionally, they, don't, they usually don't get panicked, but it, of course it depends on the animal. And it depends on how the animal has to function in its household. But as they're starting to lose their vision, that's one sense that can start to go down and make things a little bit harder for them. Then another sense is their hearing. As their hearing starts to go, it may be harder for them to function. If it's a busy household, it may be tough. It may make it tough if, they're start, if their senses are going. Their eyes, their ears. Um, another, another thing that can start to go are any of the organs, which would be the kidneys, the liver, any of the vital organs. If one of those organs starts to fail, toxins can build up in their system. The kidneys filter the toxins out of their body. The liver detoxifies their body. Even the pancreas, the pancreas produces enzymes and helps them break down their food. And the GI tract, if the GI tract starts to fail, they can't digest their food and they're likely to have bad diarrhea. But any of those organs, when those organs start to fail, toxin levels can build up they can become incontinent and some of these symptoms again as it's failing can go up and down a little bit and then go through cycles as their as the body is failing so any of these organs can decrease in function and have more and more trouble and it really depends on which organ is failing the symptoms the symptoms will depend on that The other system that can go is the musculoskeletal system. As the musculoskeletal system goes and gets weaker and weaker, that can, it can be a weakness or a slow paralysis, or it can be arthritis or joint pain, or if they had a bone tumor, it could be pain in their bone. But if the musculoskeletal system goes, they have trouble getting up and down. And again, some people are able to help their pets up and down, but if it's a Great Dane, for an example, with an elderly, in an elderly household, they may not be able to do that. So you really have to go in your situation with the way that you feel and the way that you live. When you feel your pet suffering, then it's, then it's probably time, and then it may be time to come in and talk about it. If you have any questions, you can always come in and I can help guide you on that or your veterinarian can help guide you with that. And really, uh, pain is the last factor. Dogs and cats and other animals can, when their organs are starting to fail and toxins are building up, they can feel nauseous. They, sometimes they don't eat. Sometimes it drains their energy and they're very lethargic, very tired. But then pain, when pain comes in, even if their organs aren't failing, if they have a large tumor somewhere, or if they have something that's causing pain that's not a curable thing, if they're in too much pain or their life is too much struggle each day, that's another thing to be aware of. If the pain, if you feel in your heart that the, that the pain is too much for them, if you feel that life is too much of a struggle. Each day for them is just a struggle. Struggle to get up and get around. They're incontinent and can't hold their urine or their feces and that may be distressing for the animal. If you feel like their life is a struggle, then it, then it might be time. 